Hi there, Chase with the uh, Scaly Boys. Today I want to talk to you guys about how to pick plants for your vivarium, whether to use them in uh, with animals or without animals even. Um, so to do so, you'd want to pick out plants that you want specifically for a terrarium or vivarium that you would want for an animal. So say you want something tropical, like for a crested gecko, you want to one you would want to pick out plants that are specific for a crested gecko. So just a pothos or anything that's tropical that likes water. Try to pick out plants that are relative to each other in both, may, not necessarily light, light, light's not always necessarily the case, but watering definitely. You want similar moisture levels in your tank because that way they relate to whatever animal you're choosing to use these for. Or even if um, a terrarium without animals, you would want plants to be in the same similar wet environment or humidity level that they would be at together. Um, if you're using a desert one, use um, use succulent plants, uh, very shallow roots normally, and they can be used with or without animals. I use mine with my leopard gecko, I have a natural vivarium with her, and she seems to be doing well with them, the plants seem to be growing well. They're just a little bit harder because the light and heating is, takes a little bit of a toll on the plants, so you just have to make sure you water those good. When you go to buy plants, you can either buy them from a specialist or even just from a regular um, home supply store that has any outdoor garden area. I specifically get mine from Lowe's. This is not to sponsor them, but um, I get mine from Lowe's and I just make sure I clean them up real well and that they've had to have time to quarantine. When you're quarantining a plant, the first thing you want to do is take it out of its original dirt and you want to wash it off with dechlorinated water. Um, and perhaps if you feel even, if you want to go really safe with it, you can soak it for about 15 minutes in water. I don't personally do a chemical bath because I've had plants die on me because of this and I feel like it might be an issue in the long term health of the plant. So if you feel really comfortable bleaching plants in a, uh, I think it was a 3% bleach solution with water, you go on right ahead and do that. I would just be very careful with that considering if a plant is very sensitive or not. Um, after you've cleaned it and gotten rid of the soil that came with it, I would replant it into um, all natural soil. Oh god, what's the word? Not all natural. Or I would plant it, sorry, I would plant it in some organic soil in a little plastic pot and let it sit for a month. That way, any toxic uh, pesticides, chemicals, unwanted nutrients from the plant can be washed out and into that dirt. And that way you have a quarantine plant for, you want to do that for like a month. I set mine all up in the same area in a large Tupperware, put a growing light over it on a timer. That way I don't have to worry about, are my plants getting enough light? And if not, um, you can always move them away from the light, because indoors you can control the lighting. Um, and I spray them, um, depending on the plant, whenever they need it with um, dechlorinated water. So whenever you're um, quarantining plants, just take care of them as you would normally if you had house plants. But I would just keep them all together and keep, keep plants that you've gotten at the same time together and separate from the others in different quarantine bins. You can, you can always do that in smaller bins if you only bought one plant at a time. I just happen to buy mine at least in a three or four bundle, and I always spray them real well the first time I repot pot them because it helps them grow their roots back better. Um, when I replant something, when I'm ready to put it in the terrarium that I want to, I make sure the soil is brand new, not the one it's been used because that's most likely been um, has some bad toxic material in it, probably some hard metals maybe, um, but I always use new soil in the vivarium, one that's safe for pets, especially use a more organic soil, um, and then I make sure I plant it real good to the where in which uh, the roots are facing downward real good, really um, perpendicular to the ground level at which it's at, and I make sure that um, it's very um, very stable in which I plant it and then I let it grow again for probably about another month that way it grows in and if you have a, a larger climbing pet one that gets all over the plants they won't knock it down or 
knock it around for <laughs> knock it out of its planner or with the way it's standing up. Um, you have do not be too worried if some of the plants start to be dying off because die off is natural when moving a plant it becomes stressed. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it, but it, it'll be natural. You'll notice it leaves a few leaves a little here and there, but it won't normally it won't be too bad. There are special cases where it'll be pretty bad, but eventually they'll grow back. Um, I think a case of this would be a begonia, probably. They're pretty known for being pretty, pretty sensitive. Um, but yeah, just be careful of what uh, pets. Uh, yeah, just be careful of what plants you get for your pets because you don't know whether it could be toxic to them. For reptiles, it's not that bad of a case unless your uh, reptile specific, specifically eats plants, but in which case most don't. So they don't really have a toxicity worry about them. I would still be concerned slightly depending on what your pet is, what kind of, what kind of skin it has, the scales on it. Just be concerned about maybe if the point uh, that plant might be dangerous to your pet specifically. Um, I make sure once they're in the vivarium to take good care of them, especially if they have an open top in which moisture can escape. I spray them down twice a day. Um, but if you have a closed enclosure, you can spray down good real once. And it, like if it's air sealed, you can spray it down good once. And it should be good for a while until you do a maintenance or cleaning of it. And then it should be good until, you know, until you open up the next time. So that's mostly for terrariums that you look for decoration at and you um, build without any specific animal care. Um, if you're doing a uh, vivarium with plants, I would definitely have springtails on hand. They help clean up uh, any mold residue that would be occurring or decaying material that would be occurring in your vivarium from dead plant matter, anything like that. They're just a good cleanup crew to have. And they're very easy to um, keep a culture for. Just um, just make sure they're in a warm spot and they have uh, water and food to eat off of. But other than that, having a plant full of variums, even if you don't have a naturalistic background, can be very nice addition to uh, your pets that they might really enjoy. Um, thank you, <laughs> thank you for joining me here today. I don't know if this video is very long. Maybe not do that. Thank you for. Thank you for joining me here today, and um, just don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks.